Google makes good on its promise to stop censoring search in China, Nintendo plans a 3D DS, and the Kindle will be on the iPad after all. It's Tuesday, March 23rd. I'm Natalie Del Conte, and it's time to get loaded. Google has stopped censoring search results in China just as it had been threatening to do. This is a result of the turmoil that Google has with the Chinese government. Chinese users are now redirected to google.com.hk where search is uncensored in simplified Chinese. This search is hosted in Google's Hong Kong servers which means that search may slow down in China just a bit. This could get Google blocked in China altogether since the Chinese government has said that self-censorship is not negotiable, but migrating operations to Hong Kong still is legal. I really don't think this is the permanent solution, though. Sprint and Motorola have announced the first push to talk Android phone, the Motorola i1. That's right, push to talk on Android, first time. The phone also has a 5 megapixel camera with flash, geotagging and panoramic capabilities, a 3.1 inch HVGA screen and storage to a micro SD card. It launches sometime this summer and I think I'm going to get it for my dad for Father's Day. Nintendo says a 3D version of the DS should be out within the year and you may not even need to wear 3D glasses to appreciate it. Nintendo is only just launching the XL version of the DS this week, but it would seem they've jumped on the 3D bandwagon too. It will be backwards compatible, so able to play older DS games, but that's all we really know for now, no price or exact date just yet. But the DS is so small, is 3D really a big deal on such a small screen? I'll have to see it to make a judgment call. Verizon customers can soon charge thanks to their mobile phone bill besides their mobile phone service. Verizon's upcoming mobile payment option will let users charge up to $25 per month in online purchases to their wireless account. It will require purchases be made from Verizon approved stores and you will authorize the purchase online with your cell phone number. You'll need to authorize your phone number over text message but only once. After that you can charge away on your mobile phone bill but again only up to $25. This service will launch sometime in the spring. Looks like there will be a Kindle app for the iPad when it comes out next week. We had been wondering if this would happen since the iPad is an obvious affront to the Kindle itself. Amazon announced the tablet version of the Kindle software will be tailored to the size of any tablet, have a customized background color and adjustable font sizes and brightness, as well as the option to animate your page turns just like the iPad's native book reader. You can also shop from the Kindle store within the iPad. That means you can just bypass Apple's ebook store if you are so inclined and stay within the Kindle universe. AT&T is going to carry the Palm Pre Plus and the Palm Pixie Plus. Last week, Palm released some pretty dismal earnings showing that people are just not buying their phones these days, which is a shame because they are good phones. So now Palm is expanding to other networks. Maybe that will help. AT&T has also said that it will carry the new Dell Aero, Dell's Android-based phone. All three of these phones will come to AT&T in the next few months. YouTube has pulled its real-time feature from the site because apparently nobody cared. Real time showed what your friends were watching and commenting on at any given moment on the site in a toolbar. It doesn't anymore. Those are all your headlines for today. I will see you tomorrow with more. Thank you for watching. I'm Natalie Del Conte with CNET TV and you've just been loaded.